air enters the compressor of a simple gas turbine at pressure P1 and temperature T1 given. The isentropic efficiencies of the compressor and the turbine are 83% for the compressor and 87% for the turbine. The compressor pressure ratio is 15 and the temperature at the turbine inlet is 1400 Kelvin. Volumetric flow rate of air entering the compressor is 4.25 meter cube per second. Use an air standard analysis and determine the net power developed, the temperature at the exit of the compressor, the temperature at the exit of the turbine, and the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Well, a couple things you need to do. You need to make a sketch, a sketch of the components. And so we're going to have a compressor. Then we're going to have a burner. Then we'll have a turbine. And to complete a cycle, a uh, heat exchanger, which will just reject heat to the atmosphere. And so it goes in a cycle like this, where state one is the inlet to the compressor. State two is the outlet of the compressor, but it's also the inlet of the burner. State three is the outlet of the burner, inlet of the turbine. And state four is the outlet of the turbine inlet to the heat exchanger. And the air goes in a loop in that cycle. Okay, so we have a good schematic. We have labeled our states. And then we make some notation. Uh, maybe we emphasize that this uh, compressor, uh, for each of the components, what we're going to do is a control volume analysis around. Okay. And we're going to have the standard direction for Q coming into that control volume, as well as the work per unit mass flowing out of that control volume. So we're going to do that for the burner. We're going to do that for the turbine. We're going to do that for the heat exchanger. So our general heat uh, energy balance equation would be, um, I'll do it in two steps. Zero sets so its steady state. Q dot coming in minus W dot going out of the control volume plus the mass flow rate coming in, which is the same as mass flow rate going out. So it's multiplied by the enthalpy coming in minus the enthalpy exiting that control volume. We're neglecting kinetic potential energy effects, and there you go. So I can rewrite that as 0 is equal to, and I'm going to put H in minus the h exit just changing the put, putting that first on the left hand side then we're going to have plus lowercase q minus lowercase w where lowercase q is q dot divided by m dot and lowercase w is w dot divided by m dot those are the specific heat transfer and the specific work transfer for the, each of those components. All right. So what we're, we see it is it's key to get those enthalpies at all of the states. That's what's important. So let's go after we have the schematic and a good idea of how we're going to attack the problem. We want to get a table of properties. And so the state at each state, we want our properties. And so we have one, two, three, and four. But because we have an isentropic efficiency for this compressor, which is 83%, 83, it's getting a little tight, can't write in there. Let me try and clean that up, is equal to 83%. Then I want to basically have a state two assuming isentropic compression through the compressor, and then a state two actual to adjust for the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. Then we'll go to state 3 and then the same thing through that turbine we have an isentropic efficiency of 87 percent for that turbine so I'm going to have a state 4 assuming isentropic expansion through the turbine and then we adjust for the actual coming out using the 87 percent efficiency. Okay. So we're going to have um, uh, the pressure and uh, the kilopascal, good units, temperature in Kelvin, 
it's always air it's an air standard analysis we're going to be interested in enthalpy and kilojoule per kilogram and that's our most important column we, we need that when we do the energy balance around each component okay now we're given the pressure ratio so p2 divided by p1 for this problem was 15 it's right there so that's our pressure ratio of 15. With that information, we can go ahead and say, well, it comes in at 100 kilopascal. We can um, compute and fill out the, the first column for all the pressures. So it goes to 15 times 100, 1,500, 1,500, 1,500. And then it drops back down across the uh, turbine to 100 and 100 okay we're given some temperatures we're given 290 for the temperature at the inlet to the compressor as well as 1400 right there so that's the exit of the burner that's 1400 okay at this point you can go to the table we're going to use the table a22 in our textbook which is basically our air table and we can look up the enthalpy at 290 and it comes in at let me just put it right here at 290.16 and while you're there you might as well look it up for 1400 and we find that it's 1515.42 okay how do we compute um, this isentropic process well if you're using the table a22 stay in the table a22 there's a column for piece of r no name piece of r it's just used for when you have an isentropic process okay so the isentropic process that's a bad looking p try again pr okay we look up the value of piece of r at that temperature of 290 and piece of R is state 1 is 1.2311. And then we remember the re relationship that piece of R at state 2 divided by piece of R at state 1 is equal to the actual P at 2 divided by P at 1. And so it's like I know P2 and P1 and PR1 I just calculated. I can calculate PR2. So PR2 is PR1 times P2 over P1, the pressure ratio. So you just multiply 15, the pressure ratio, times 1.2311. You come in with 18.4665. And at this point, you can now interpolate in table A22 to get the temperature as a function of piece of R. So you can, maybe if I show it going this way, in the workflow you're going to get the 620.7 really don't need that temperature but there it is and it's 628.83 okay so at this point i like to put a little extra information extending this table and basically it's what is the work that the compressor would um, use or need if it was isentropic okay well it's the difference between the H2S and the H1 that comes in for this problem at um, 338 point I'm gonna run out of room so I'm gonna change the way I'm doing this I would do it up here I would do the work the compressor requires isentropic that'll be the h2s minus the h1 which comes in at 338.67 kilojoules per kilogram now we're given the isentropic efficiency of that compressor is 0.83 so we can calculate the work the compressor actually uses is the minimum work divided by that isentropic efficiency and so that comes in at 408.036 kilojoules per kilogram 
So then we take and add that, so we get the H2 actual is equal to the H1 coming in, plus the work that the compressor actually needs. Okay, so we use that to calculate the enthalpy, and that enthalpy comes in at 698.20. There's a few steps. I've outlined them over here on the side, and it's to get that H2 actual. We really don't need the temperature at 2 actual, but you could get it if you want it. I'm going to leave it off the table. What do we do for um, the analyzing what's going through the turbine? Same thing. We're going to use the table A22, calculate that piece of R at 1400 Kelvin. That comes in at 400. Whoops, let me not put it in that color. It comes in at 450.5. We then look at the pressure ratio. It doesn't go up by 15. It goes down by a factor of 15. So maybe I should have said that this was the flow here. This is the same flow. So you divide that by 15, and you're left with 30.03. Okay, then we can look up both temperature and enthalpy. We really need only need enthalpy. So we can interpolate and find that the enthalpy is 721.68. Go off to the side. All right, so what is the work that the turbine would produce if it was really isentropic expansion? Well, it would be the 15, well, it would be this H3 minus H4S, which is, when you look at those numbers and compare, it comes in at 793.74 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, you're given the efficiency of that turbine is 87%. So what the turbine actually produces is only the isentropic efficiency of the turbine times what it would have produced if it was isentropic expansion. So we don't get 793.74, we get less, we get 690.56 kilojoules per kilogram. So now we can get the enthalpy at 4 actual is equal to the enthalpy at 3 minus that work that is removed from the turbine and so we get the 4 actual comes in at 824.86 so they, I'm kind of drawing little blue arrows showing you the logic or the flow of the calculations but that is the most important column that's our enthalpy column. Okay, now I like to make a table of energy transfers or really the, for the first law. So I'm going to scroll down. And so this table is going to be for each component. And what we're going to do is we're really going to put in a comp part like this in the table part like this in a table and a part like that in the table. So in the fir um, uh, um, first column is the component, the second column of the table, it'll be my H in minus my H exit for that component. And then it'll be the specific Q and then the specific W. Each of these have units of kilojoules per kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram and kilojoules per kilogram. So this first table was a table of properties. The second table is a table of energy transfers or I would call maybe a table for the first law of thermodynamics for each component. This energy balances. Okay, so first component is our compressor. And then we go to the burner then the turbine, and then our, I'll just call it HE for heat exchanger. Okay, so for the compressor, our change in the H would be the H in minus the H out. Well, we have our values in the a previous table, so we can compute H1 minus H2. It's negative 
408.0. Go ahead and complete that column for the burner, then the turbine, then the heat exchanger. So for the burner, it's HN of 2 minus H3. You look up here, you find your H2 right here, your H3 right there, right below it. And you make that calculation. And we'll put our value in negative 817.2. For the turbine, a positive 690.2. And for that heat exchanger, 534.7. Okay. If you wanted to, you could do the sum. You'd find those have to be zero. But uh, that's not that important. Let's move on to the Q's and the W's. Well, the standard assumption is that the compressor is a device to boost the pressure. It's a work-consuming device. It's not a device for heat transfer with the surroundings. Hence, that's our standard assumption. It's zero. Likewise, it's for the turbine, it's adiabatic, zero for Q. And then for the burner and the heat exchanger, both of those are heat transfer devices. They're not power producing or power consuming devices. So zero, zero, so half of this side of the table is zero. And then we just take a look at uh, for the compressor. Now I've written it right here. So we're going to have HN, H1 minus H2. We calculated that already and put it in the first column there. And then the Q for the compressor was zero. So basically W is equal to H1 minus H2. It makes it really easy. It's negative 408.0. And you go down and do the same thing for the turbine, 690.2. All right, now you go back to the burner and the heat exchanger, they have no work. So the Q is the negative of the change in the enthalpy. So it becomes the 817.2 and the negative 534.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Do the sum to get Q net. And Q net for this problem is 280. 2.5 kilojoules per kilogram and then do the sum of that last column to get W net and that's 282.5 kilojoules per kilogram they're exactly the same they match if they didn't look for an error it's okay good all right now at this point I have my table of my energy balances or energy transfers for each component as well as the properties but uh, I need to go back up and solve for the parts that they're asked to solve for. So for part A, what is that net power developed? Well, you're given the mass flow rate of air and you've calculated the net work per kilogram flow of air and that'll be W dot net of the cycle. So this mass flow rate was a whopping, what was it, 4.2 kilogram per second. I have to look up here just for a minute. Oh, no, they gave us a volumetric flow rate, so there's a little extra work that we have to do. So I'm, I'm going to have to scroll down. So the mass flow rate is the volumetric flow rate times or divided by, it's multiplied by the mass density or divided by the specific volume. Now, because they give us the volumetric flow rate coming in at state one into the compressor, we want the specific volume at state one coming into the compressor. So how do I calculate the specific volume at state one? We use the ideal gas equation, RT1 over P1, that R is for air, substitute numbers, 8.314 divided by 28.97. That'll give you R for air in our SI units. The temperature coming in was 290 Kelvin. And our uh, pressure uh, is 100 kilopascal. And we could calculate, and I'm rushing a little bit here, but we've done this a number of times, uh, 0 0.83226 meter cubed per kilogram and so that's 
what we use right here. Good. And then we also have that volumetric flow rate, which was 4.25 meter cube per second. And we calculate our mass flow rate of air comes in at 5.10657 kilograms per second. We then can substitute that here with the, the net power. And so maybe I just run that number right here. That would be 5.10657 kilograms per second times the 282.5 kilojoules per kilogram and we get the net power out of the cycle is equal to 1443 kilowatts answer for part a well i have to scroll back up and look for what was the question for part b part b is what is the temperature at the exit of the compressor well um, this is the compressor T3, um, no, T2 actual right here. So what I need to do is I need to get that temperature right here. So using the enthalpy, I can calculate the temperature at the exit. Okay, so we have to interpolate. Um, the interpolation gives 600 in 86. What about the temperature at the exit of the turbine? It's very similar. You need this temperature. Once you have the enthalpy interpolate and you find 803 Kelvin. So bingo and bingo. And then what is the thermal efficiency of the cycle? I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit for that. So the thermal efficiency of the cycle is our lowercase w net divided by our lowercase q but only for the heat coming in the burner q burner and so we find that it's 282.5 kilojoules per kilogram divided by 817.2 kilojoules per kilogram and the thermal efficiency comes in at 34.6 percent and that's the answer for part D. Let me scroll back up so we can see everything. 34.6 looks like the right answer. Well, with that, I think we're done with this problem. Thank you.